So um, I'm looking at this dim, and we're basically presenting an extension to Enzyme, which is the tool to take derivatives at the LVMIR level. And so we'll, we'll first start off by basically giving a brief overview of what compiler-based automatic implementation does and how it works. Uh, and then it will move on to how vector mode and batching uh, enabled by LVM and also on the LVM level works. So a few examples, present a few benchmarks, and then we can talk about future work. So a rough level, what everyone does in automatic differentiation, all the machine frameworks and so on, is uh, the two modes, forward mode and reverse mode. The main difference is that um, forward mode, in a sense, performs differentiation with the flow of computation, so you don't require elaborate caching there. And uh, forward mode is best from a uh, few to many functions. So, but what actually machine learning frameworks, for example, use is reverse mode, which flows in the opposite direction. So it requires you to cache values in between and is best for vectors to few outputs, like for example, a loss. So what are the advantages of doing this on a compiler level? And where does Enzyme's kind of philosophy come from? So the main issue behind the original Enzyme is that running compiler optimizations and utilizing the compiler infrastructure allows you, allows you to run much more optimization and run a much more optimal code and hence be more performant. So because we directly plug into the compiler as a compiler plugin, we're able to run optimizations before and after differentiation and we can identify information from source line and metadata. And we can also rewrite and modify library calls, which is really convenient if we move to stuff like parallelism, for example, as well. And for that, and generally, we can basically run a JIT compiler, which is what happens in some of the ways Enzyme is exposed to a user. So any, L any language going to LVMIR can be differentiated with, with Enzyme, basically. So you would first want to run your optimizations to have the optimized LVM code, then run Enzyme to synthesize your gradients, and then you can optimize it again and generate your execut executable. And Enzyme in that sense is very deeply rooted in the LVM ecosystem. We basically built on the compile infrastructure and able to target all the, with my caveats, the, all the LVM hardware targets. We have very well-defined semantics, and we can also really benefit and also write compiler-based optimization passes and transformations to, to, to have optimal code for our purposes. And with this, uh, Tim will now start to focus on the vector merge and the batching. So as we already heard, uh, AD basically comes in two main flavors, uh, which are forward mode and reverse mode. Forward mode uh, gives you the derivative of uh, a function f with respect to only one input, and reverse mode basically gives you the gradients of f for only one output at a time. In the graphic here, we can see uh, that if we wanted to compute in blue the derivative with respect to the uh, first input, we would only want to propagate values stemming from the first input. So everything else basically needs to be masked or zeroed out. In the, uh, and if we uh, take that and overlay those computations, we see that this approach perfectly maps to SIMD. So uh, the use cases here are mainly uh, that we can make optimal use of our hardware. And as already mentioned, uh, if you wanted to use forward mode AD to compute, for example, derivatives for all of the inputs, we could use vector mode here quite efficiently. And in the case of reverse mode, we can also get gradients for functions that have multiple outputs. The benefits of vector mode in general here are we can avoid uh, re-evaluation of uh, the original function in every, uh, for every uh, derivative we would compute. And we can, uh, in the case of reverse mode, since we might need to reuse some of the values from the primal function, in the reverse pass, we can uh, perform all the caching and 
rematerialization only once for each uh, gradient with, with respect to the uh, output. So here we basically have an example showing forward mode AD. Um, we are computing a sum here of our input, and we have this function slow, which <laughs> is really slow, but it does not itself propagate any derivatives, it's just involved in computing the final derivative. So when we go ahead and run forward mode AD here, we can see that basically for the sum we are computing the sum of the derivatives, and we are still multiplying the whole thing at the end with our value of the slow function. When we now apply a vector mode here, we can see that in blue, the uh, derivative computations are duplicated for every um, input, basically. But we can see that we can save uh, one or well, yeah, n computations of our very slow function. So this is done by uh, when we um, now run this, uh, call this function, we just synthesized, uh, we can basically initialize our, uh, our seed our dx with uh, one zero to get the derivative with, with respect to the first argument, and uh, we can also initialize it with uh, zero one to get the uh, derivative with respect to the second argument, basically masking out the values we don't want here. So um, now we're going to talk about the uh, design of enzyme. So first we are um, performing some kind of activity analysis, which basically determines instructions that are not uh, required or do not propagate derivatives. After that, we'll um, perform a type analysis, which uh, is really useful for doing reverse mode AD, but can also be used for forward mode. And in the synthesis step, we um, go ahead, and in the case of forward mode, propagate with each variable uh, its derivative. Uh, for pointers, we uh, store a vector of pointers shadowing that memory location, basically being the derivative in that case. And we also shadow all heap allocations with the exact same uh, data structures as in the primal. And when we do vector mode now, we go ahead and uh, emit each application of the chain rule n times, basically vectorizing the whole thing. And then we go ahead and let the LLVM vectorizer do the rest for us. Here's how this all looks in LLVM IR. Basically, we have, this time we're computing x squared. We have our multiplication and in the derivative this is then, uh, the chain rule is then applied two times, and we all put this in an array and return it. So some of the uh, optimizations we can perform here are activity analysts, as already shown before. We can save some computations of uh, inactive uh, values, and there are also a few um, yeah, low-hanging fruit we could pick and by basically uh, combining calls to malloc and free. And now um, we are going to talk quickly about how types in LLVM are vectorized. Uh, you can imagine a type like this, like a type tree. And there are basically two main approaches you could take to vectorizing the whole thing, which is basically take, uh, putting it in an um, array with uh, n elements, in this case two, or you can vectorize at the leaf nodes of the whole tree, and then you get this more complex uh, struct, which has the caveat that you have to um, modify structs in there recursively, which may uh, impact compatibility in your code calling that. So users would basically need to be aware of how the structures are represented in Enzyme. Right now we uh, chose the first approach since that guarantees compatibility, but it kind of um, impacts our performance 
since uh, we don't have the best memory locality, basically based on that, which kind of prevents us from doing vectorized loads in stores. But we're working on that in the future. All right. So there exist a number of uh, auto differentiation tools out there. I mean, um, what? Like there exist source-to-source -source transformation ex um, frameworks like Tapinut, for example, which take your source code and then um, directly on, based on that high level information will um, write the gradients. And then there exists a bunch of uh, operator overloading tools which implement their own differentiated types, which uh, CodyPack would be one example for. And then exists um, something like CLAT, which um, basically taps into the, uh, the Clang abstract index tree. Um, some of them, Tapinat and Codipack, have vector mode. Um, Clad and Adder do not. And so we will now, we, have, we benchmark them. Basically, there exists a benchmark suite by Microsoft called ADBench, containing a, um, benchmarks to really stress test those um, traits. And just looking at a long short to memory cell, will be vary the vector width from 1 to 64. We see that enzyme presents a sizable speed up over tapenade, which was the previous state of the art tool for that. Um, mostly due to activity analysis, which shows that the approach of enzyme interacting with the compiler and being deeply rooted in the compiler is very beneficial here. Um, this is a Gaussian mixture model where Vector is varied between 1 and 32, where at some point where the AD bench throws in much, much larger data, probably becomes too big to vectorize on the CPU, and then you run into scaling issues here. And this is basically just a, a LIBOR benchmark. This is a, a credit benchmark um, where um, the vector is the problem size, and there we have a very, very sizable speed up over top of us. Future work. Um, right now, we only always have to assume uh, static vector width. So, dynamic vector width is something that needs to be looked at in the future. The different approach to type tree vectorization. And right now, there's no proven, like in theory, Enzyme often has these OpenMP and MPI calls at least for reverse mode, but there's no verification yet for the forward mode. And there's uh, no uh, GPU support for forward and the vectorization yet. So in summary, um, Enzyme is a tool for performing reverse and forward mode AD of statically analyzable LLVMIR and perform differentiation on the LLVMIR. That enables us to work on any language which goes to the LLVMIR, like your plug in your favorite language, using some sets of set of the LLVM compiler. And also going to all of the backends. There's a lot of work in progress in many areas. Um, it's open source. We also have a compiler explorer instance, and there's a weekly, weekly meeting which we invite everyone who's interested to join. And I think that opens up already questions. Oh, well, thank you guys. Um, do we have any questions out there? Hello, very nice talk. Um, I had a question about, um, so you mentioned that uh, you vectorize and then you leave, that, that there, is, there is a split between the, the, the work that you do to vectorize and then you, you say you, I, we leave the rest to the LLVM vectorizer. Could, do, could you, what, what is the job of the LLVM vectorizer? What, is, what, what, what the LLVM vectorizer is doing? Uh, basically, um we, we just emit each uh, application of the chain rule here, mm -hmm. and then we rely on the LVM vectorizer to see uh, the opportunity to uh, use some D instructions here in this case. But do you already have vectors there in LLVM IR, or, or the vectors are, ins are inferred from, from you? You have scalar code and you... The, the yeah, we're just emitting uh, n times the scalar code and relying right. on LLVM to do okay. the rest. Okay, perfect. Which Thank works you. pretty good. Well, any further questions out there? 
Um, I have one. Uh, I'm not um, myself suspect very familiar with the problem domain. Um, when you say auto differentiation, um, the tool is able to, for a arbitrary LVMIR function, uh, produce another function that computes the derivative of what the first function would do or compute. Exactly. Okay. Um, is it um, is it completely general? Are there any inputs that it cannot cope with? Well, in, so the thing there is that um, if you just have pure LVM, uh, just pure, let's say C plus plus code or C code without library calls or using something like MPI OpenMP, then yes. The problem there becomes then if you have external libraries, then um, Knowing, it basically becomes a game of knowing what the derivative of that library call is going to be. So if you think of something like MPI, then if you differentiate through the parallelism, then a send becomes a receive, and that's something that uh, LVM can't know. So you kind of that you need to know that in your agent generator for you to be able to then for that pro like what you call a primal, that's like a, the normal function evaluation synthesize the gradient. Um, so that's kind of the, the constraint on generality in that sense that like you need to know what derivatives of those library calls are going to be. Okay, okay I see. Uh, do we have any further questions? Yes, one at the back. Um, yeah, my question is, have you considered uh, basically taking an approach similar to what JAX does? So instead of uh, vectorizing on the LLVMIR level, um, rather chitting ready kernels for vector mode. So like XLA in the JAX case. Hmm? So uh, the question was uh, if we were using ready-made kernels. If you have considered that. Um, yeah, for example, if we were to differentiate uh, through stuff like Kublas, uh, we would basically uh, use the uh, ready-made kernels provided there, or QDNN. I mean, in, for example, like if, you, if you point out to QDNN, I mean, that's basically what PyTorch, Jax, and the others do. I mean, QDNN implements the forward and the reverse pass. So all they say is like, just like with MPI, like, hey, this is my, my forward function evaluation, this is the reverse, just go the other way around. So yes, this is something we can do, but we haven't implemented that for Kublas or QDNN, for example. I see one more question out there. Actually, more of a follow-up comment to the previous question. So one other difference between, say, like Enzyme and Ajax style approach is JAX, you'd have to rewrite your entire code to use whatever JAX differential operators are, which say implement convolution, et cetera. Um, the benefit of Enzyme is that you can take arbitrary LVMIR, and then you can go ahead and differentiate through it. So if there isn't a pre-existing JAX thing for it, in addition to the fact that it may not necessarily already be written in JAX or Python, you can directly go ahead and differentiate through it. The other sort of benefit of this approach in particular is that you can do it after optimization. And if you look at, say, the original Enzyme paper, you can see that there's potential for asymptotic sometimes speedups by being able to first apply optimization before doing differentiation, whereas JAX has to sort of just immediately apply differentiation and then hope that an X lifestyle approach is able to fix it up after the fact. Oh, well, uh, any final questions out there? And if not, um, we will have our next talk in a couple of minutes, but let's thank our uh, presenters again. <laughs>